Hi, we're back again with the AI animation generator. It needed a long overdue uh, video to just give you a sense of what's possible with the new UX. Uh, I think we've been with an older video. So I will just quickly run you through the wonderful updates here and hopefully you're able to get more out of the tool now. Uh, so this is our basic uh, set up with the example which has now for every prompt you have a separate cell and you can determine uh, what the frame is when the new prompt needs to be set up and you can add one uh, every single time in this way so when you're starting out i would suggest that uh, keep your settings uh, by or for default so it will give you a sense of how the prompting works in context of the camera movements what's really appealing in this tool is the camera movement I think once you learn how to get your settings in place you can really play with the prompts very interestingly and develop stories through that so our default uh, camera movement is just a very simple and slight zoom all other uh, things are left as is here we have two prompts, one starting at the zero frame or the first frame, uh, which is a wide angle uh, photograph of a busy street in Bombay in a particular area called Varsova. And our second prompt is of the interior of a pub, uh, which, which is in the evening and it has neon lights and pub lighting and smoke and all of that. And uh, do notice that I've added a negative prompt here as there's no space uh, in the settings for negative prompting. The easiest way to do it is add your entire prompt put a colon, uh, put one, so that's the one that you want. And then anything that you want, uh, that you don't want, you just say that particular prompt, colon and minus one. Uh, and then uh, I will just hit submit and then it gives me something, a very slow movement as if you're moving through the city and that transitions into the interior of a pub. So you'll see that happen uh, somewhere in the middle of the video that you see. So this is about 80 uh, frames and at 12 frames per second that's kind of an average of 6 seconds for video uh, and as you move up or down the number of frames that you do the credit uh, updates here so you know how much you end up using uh, so I'll show you a couple more examples and then I will uh, do one run for you specially for this video uh, so this one is very simple we've uh, made the zoom really fast at 1 uh, and there's only one prompt so it's moving from that same city and then it's moving really fast and it's almost going into the sky uh, and then we have I think I'm going to show you uh, this one which is um, where we've kept a quick zoom but we've also made some changes in the pan now I'm going to get into this but uh, just see this uh, video and you'll understand how this is a very typical shot in a film where you are in a city and it pans up and you go to the sky and then you pan down and then you are in another city almost like a transition shot so this is really simple to do all we did was we added the the same uh, prompt for Bombay and then we said okay give us a wide angle shot of uh, birds in the sky and then another wide angle shot of a uh, a busy street in New York so I've just kept the zoom as is and what I've done in the now horizontal and vertical pan are very simple it's just moving your camera either side to side which is your horizontal pan or vertical is moving it up and down uh, keep in mind this is not on, on an axis where it's rotating it's just moving straight up straight down or straight left and straight right so here what we've done is we have activated the uh, the pan based on the frames uh, setting so here I've said that if you're at uh, zero frame up till the 49th frame I don't want any pan so here you see that it's uh, moving and then at the at the 50th frame the pan starts to go upwards so you're moving towards the city uh, towards the sky and then I have at the hundredth frame which is where we have our New York City's prompt we have brought it down back again to minus four so you can see that that's exactly how it's moving it's zooming in a little bit it's going up at a certain point and it's transitioning to the to the sky with the birds and then it comes back down so this is really simple to do you just have to remember what frame count have you changed the prompt at and then based on that you can change out the the way the pan horizontally or vertically is working 
the same settings work for zoom as well so all you need to do is add uh, positive or negative numbers and it will like based on a speed that you prefer so i would suggest like if you do somewhere between a 2 and an 8 or a 10 i think it will work quite okay sometimes it could be very fast also so just be a bit careful and then you could do the same thing with zooming out you could do the same thing with moving side oops moving sideways um so i will show you now a couple more examples where we've used it uh, and uh, it will give you an idea of what's what else is possible uh, so this one is another example where we've used only a horizontal pan so here uh, the zoom is continuing to be at one uh, which basically means it's uh, it's uh, it's just kind of static and then from there uh, we are moving the pan uh, towards the towards the right I think it's going to yes it's going towards the right and then uh, it goes back to uh, zero and then it goes from there to very slightly to the left and then it stops moving so and then it of course it changes into a cake so uh, so the way that this needs to be done again is the same as the vertical pan which was here all you need to do is add the details based on the frame and then add the speed that you want it to uh, run on um, I always advise that you start with the smaller number of frames to see how your animation is appearing and then uh, push it to however big you want to so you save a bit of credits you get an understanding of the output and then push it as much as you want uh, do bear in mind that if there is a lot of like distance between two prompts like say from 0 to 200 sometimes the prompt will go a bit haywire and it will not be as intended so uh, just try to uh, balance out the way you're prompting the way the zoom is working and all of those details to make sure that it uh, doesn't start looking like it doesn't mean anything now we will go on to our 3d settings now the 3d settings is nothing but uh, allowing the so-called camera movement to be on an axis so you can rotate it um, or you can uh, move it up and down left or right uh, however you'd like so the way this works is uh, that we will I will just show you the video so here we've got a wide angle shot of a boat deck and there's water splashing and the second is the interior of a roller coaster so here if you notice there's no zooming it's just moving uh, side to side as if you're like it's rocking on a you're rocking on a on a boat that's the water is really uh, not very uh, settled so here all my settings are uh, at one and zero zero so I'm not touching the pan on the zoom but what I'm doing is uh, I am allowing uh, the camera movement to move from uh, minus on uh, minus towards the left and then uh, sorry counterclockwise and then clockwise so that's all I've done I've added it at the frame that I want to which is at 50 so as soon as when you see here we are at like about four seconds it starts moving back to uh, to the uh, to the counterclockwise direction and the prompt also changes uh, so here we've got the same uh, same setting I think yes it's the same setting and we've used um, we've used the original prompt of Bombay uh, busy street and the pub so this is also really simple to do and then uh, finally this is a bit uh, more of a complex prompting uh, in terms of the frames uh, and the camera movement so let's just uh, dive into it a little bit so here what I've done is I've kept various uh, pan detail horizontal pan details based on um, based on the frame num the frame that you're on so either on the hundredth or the two hundredth or, or the three hundredth frame number and then also what I've done is I've given it a, a rotation that's starting at zero so now clockwise and co counterclockwise is the camera moving like this uh, whereas rotating up and down is I don't know if you can see it in, in my camera but I can maybe show you in, with the phone let me see if it's visible yeah so counterclockwise clockwise is then of course moving this way rotating uh, up and down is moving like this and then left and right is like this so that's the way it's moving 
so here as you observe that I've kept up and down 0 and then for left and right I've kept a minus 0 0.04 so the way this is mo going to move now is that at uh, at this 0 frame to 100 frame there is a pan movement moving left to right and then I've stopped it with this 0 here at the 100th frame and then again at the 200th frame which is my busy street of Warsaw I have uh, started the pan all over again um, and then uh, the rotation settings are running from across the entire uh, f entire set of frames from 0 to 400 so this is the way it's moving it's a little bit fast uh, so it's moving towards the top of the city and then it gives you this aerial view of Bombay and it's moving uh, back down and then after it's uh, done because it's also zooming after it's done uh, the zoom it comes back to a city street scene of Warsaw so here you will notice uh, that at some point it will it will uh, it see my prompt is at 200 but I've also put in a detail at 300 for the panning. So you can also do that, that you just have this one single prompt uh, that's running for say 100, 200 number of frames and you just manipulate the, uh, the camera movements. So that is also a possibility. So let us know what you're feeling about this, try it out and uh, we are always available on Discord to help you with anything you need to do with the prompting and go through the examples. I think you'll be able to get a bit more idea of what you can do. Thank you.